I've been trying to avoid it in this series concerning the Ocean Gate Titan, but I feel it's necessary that I go over the carbon fiber cylinder, the general nature of carbon fiber, and how the cylinder was supposed to be manufactured. I also need to go over the two different versions of the hole, made in 2017 and 2020. The general consensus seems to be blame Stockton Rush, he's a jerk and it's all his fault, but this may not have been his fault and I will explain why. First, let's start with some basics. Carbon fiber is basically carbon fiber reinforced plastic. It is very stiff. It does very well in tension. It does not do very well in compression. It can have voids, delaminations, be resin rich or resin poor, meaning either too much or not enough resin. It can fail due to delaminations caused by an impact, which may not result in an immediate failure, but it can be something that happens over time. In some circumstances, it can fail by shearing or it can be simply crushed with enough force. There is a phenomenon peculiar to carbon fiber, which is called a kink band, which is an area where the carbon fiber buckles. The strength of the carbon fiber object has very much to do with the orientation of the fibers and the design of the object itself. When carbon fiber fails, it will most often do so suddenly and catastrophically, usually with little or no warning. In the case of a cylinder being compressed, it is particularly subject to failure by kink bands which can suddenly appear, therefore making them unpredictable. Carbon fiber cannot become a waterlogged sponge. It is essentially solid and substantial water intrusion cannot really occur if it was manufactured properly. Carbon fiber does not expand and contract like metal will. Certain types of metal can suffer from the effects of galvanic corrosion when paired with carbon fiber in a corrosive environment. With carbon fiber, it's either going to do the job or outright fail if there's some sort of stimulus to make it do so. There's not really much in between. In the case of a submersible, if it fails, it's gonna be sudden, quick, and extremely violent. You might get a few minutes of warning if you're lucky. The hydrostatic pressure at 4,000 meters imposes a force of about 22 million pounds on the titanium end caps, which is squeezing the carbon fiber cylinder between them. I don't necessarily disagree with the use of carbon fiber for a submersible in conjunction with the real-time monitoring system, which I explained in a previous video. But as Stockton said, it has to be done right. And here's where there will be very many different viewpoints. In my opinion, the real-time monitoring system and the concept of a carbon fiber hole just needed a lot more testing to be proven safe and reliable. I feel that there was too much reliance on a brand new technology to save the day. New technology always has bugs and in spite of best efforts, often has to go through several iterations before everything's all worked out. Carbon fiber is in a league of its own, really, and when used in this manner, unpredictable things can happen. As I've been doing further research, I've dug up some interesting information. Around 2016, Spencer Composites seems to have been the ones that were pushing the idea of using carbon fiber domes for the original design intent of the sub. Originally, Stockton wanted to have the entire thing made out of carbon. But Rush found in his one-third scale testing of holes at APLUW that the carbon fiber domes just couldn't handle the pressure and any kind of opening in them would cause a failure. So that's when the decision was made to go with three and a quarter inch thick titanium domes instead. In 2017, Rush had contracted Spencer Composites to make him a cylinder with the following specifications. 100 inches long, 66 inches in outside diameter, able to withstand 6,600 PSI with a safety factor of 2.25. That seems a bit small to me. I would really want to have a safety factor of at least three. Originally, the cylinder walls were going to be four and a half inches thick, but Ocean Gate rounded it up to five inches for, quote, an additional safety margin, unquote. Thus far, I've been operating under the assumption that the carbon fiber cylinder was unidirectionally wound around a spandrel like a giant roll of tape. I have not been able to verify that any axially mounted fibers were actually in that 2017 version of the hole. We can't really determine that by watching the video, unfortunately. I could be mistaken about the unidirectionality of the fibers, but I don't see how it could have been manufactured that way with large flanges on both sides of that spandrel. If it was indeed unidirectional, without any cross-layering, it would basically be only as strong as the resin. 
Without the cross layering, the carbon fibers would ordinarily be doing very little to make it strong. Someone explained to me a bit about the design process with modeling software and how it's possible to have a disconnect between what the program concludes and what actually happens in the real world. This software is generally not designed to model things that are five inches thick. Perhaps their program told them that cross-layering wasn't necessary? Spencer Composites said it would be manufactured by axially, but was it really? If there were axial layers, was there enough of them? I kind of doubt there was. The way the first hole was manufactured would likely cause it to be more resin-rich and prone to buckling, as I presented in a previous video. When, it when the cylinder was done being manufactured, it was vacuum bagged and baked for seven days at 278 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how I understand it was made. Anyways, when that process was completed, it was sandblasted and then given a five millimeter thick coating of polyurethane, which uh, I assume is what people are calling rhino liner. Ocean Gate's design partnership with Spencer Composites seems to have ended some time before 2020. Um, we made one hull. Uh, I took it to 4,000 meters, um, uh, and it made a lot of noise, which is a very sphincter-tightening experience. Um, <laughs> we brought it back, and it wasn't getting quieter on the second dive. It should have been dramatically quieter. If you think about it, when you get to this uh, maximum pressure, it's a thing called the Kaiser effect. you get a lot of popping and crackling. And the next time you go to that pressure, you should have a lot less. All those weak fibers and voids have all been taken care of. And this hull wasn't doing it. So we scrapped it. We went back. We built another one. The first one we had done was with a uh, highly recommended uh, marine manufacturer. We went to aerospace quality. We use the same uh, prepreg that's used on the 787 with our partners. And we couldn't have done any of this without partners. Uh, great partner in Electro Impact up in Everett. Great to be in this community where there is such a um, preponderance of expertise in titanium and carbon fiber and manufacturing and engineering. We did work with Janicki, Boeing, NASA. There's 667 layers of carbon fiber uh, in just a, what's called a 0 090 uh, axial and um, um, uh, rotational uh, layout, which is not normally done. But in the ocean, that's all you see. You don't get any torsional moments. We built this hull up. We um, were. Uh, tested it at the Deep Ocean Test Facility in Annapolis, Maryland, an amazing uh, facility, the only one on the planet where you can put something like that in a, for a test. And then in 2021, after having to cancel twice before, we were able to go out and dive on the Titanic. So I recently found out that a new hole was made for Ocean Gate by Electro Impact and Janicki Industries in 2020. If this hole was actually used in the version of the Titan that imploded, it would have required the rebuilding of the original version of the sub. If that is the case, did they have new titanium rings made, or did they remove the existing rings and put it on the new hull? In any case, the COVID pandemic certainly must have completely derailed any plans that were made and slowed down the whole process. The first expedition to Titanic was in the summer of 2021, so that could explain why there seems to be two slightly different versions of Titan and why there are so many different pictures of test dives of it in various states of completion between 2017 and 2020 or so. The new carbon fiber provider was to be Torre. This hole allegedly made use of zero and 90 degree cross layering. We can see their whole system here. I've been told that this hole was manufactured using a much better method in one inch thick increments and it was cured between each layer. This would have been done a total of five times to achieve the five inch thickness. Five one inch layers done in sequence gives me much more confidence in the strength of the hull. A more uniform product could be achieved that way, in theory anyways. It apparently took a couple of months to complete the manufacturing of the cylinder. The existence of two different versions of the hull has created some confusion. In both cases, these companies were subcontractors and OceanGate did not directly build these hulls themselves. OceanGate put their trust in the expertise of a third party who they literally trusted with their lives. These experts were asked to manufacture something that really has to be considered experimental. Carbon fiber, when used in this configuration with the job it is being asked to do, is just demanding quite a tall order considering that it's under absolutely unbelievable compression and not tension. So that means that this cylinder was likely somewhere around 50 to 60% as strong as it would be otherwise. 
Therefore, the use of the appropriate type of carbon fiber and adequate cross-layering is absolutely critical. That aside, what actually caused the whole breach for now will have to remain a mystery. We actually may never know for sure. I was originally at the end of the video at this point, but then I noticed on this picture something that really causes some confusion for me. Here we can see what appears to be taken in mid-process of figuring out how the interior was going to work with these horizontal slats just visible at the top. That's curious, but even more curious is, is that another carbon fiber cylinder sitting up there on that shelving? Rush did plan on having two more of these submersibles capable of 6,000 meters. Was that one on the shelf plan for the 6,000 meter submersible? Was that the one that was made in 2020 and here they are dismantling the 2017 version of Titan? In any case, at least I have hopefully cleared up some confusion about the carbon fiber holes. There were indeed two versions of the Titan. So we are left with one big question. Where exactly did the carbon fiber used in the 2020 hole come from, and was it, quote, expired? According to this article written after the implosion occurred, it is claimed that Rush said he bought the carbon fiber at a huge discount from Boeing because it was past its shelf life for airplanes. He claimed it was perfectly fine because it wasn't for airplane certification. Technically, that would be true, but it does cause one to wonder if this was a factor in the tragedy. We don't know the date when this allegedly took place. In my mind, this claim is a he said, she said kind of thing, and we only get to hear one side of the story. Rush could have simply said Boeing because who has heard of Ture? He probably also wanted to make it sound more impressive because who hasn't heard of Boeing? Past its shelf life is equivalent to best if used by date on food. Food is rarely ever bad on that date. It just can't by law be on the shelf anymore. I'm not convinced that this is the smoking gun. As we saw earlier, the 2017 hole never stopped making noise and was scrapped. It truly suffered on every dive. I would have expected that one to fail just from seeing how it was manufactured. According to Bruce Morton, the former OceanGate engineer, the 2020 hole made some noise on the first dive, and then it was quiet on the dives that followed. If we can listen in and hear those, those, those fibers breaking, we can know ahead of time if it's gonna fail. And so we use that as a predictive uh, process. The good thing is that the first time we put, we tested the hull, we put it into a hyperbaric chamber. Uh, we got, we, we could hear those fibers breaking, uh, but then on all successive uh, dives, uh, successive tests, it was quiet. So we kind of like worked out all the kinks out of it. That was the expected outcome. So all was fine for at least 13 visits the, to the Titanic until the day Titan imploded. The only thing predictable about carbon fiber used in this way is that it will be unpredictable. It's fine until suddenly it's not.